Well, goodbye, 624. 624, nothing. Barker to you, no? Mr. Barker, see? Got a fig? Certainly, Mr. Barker. Anything to oblige an old customer? Figs. Hmm. Quite a wrench leaving the old college. Hmm. Well, so long. We'll be seeing you. Give me records. How do you do, Mr. Grant? How do you do? Please sit down. The Barker file, please. Barker 624. It's Barker I've come to talk about. Yes, I know. I rather anticipated your visit. That's quick work. It's the Villiers Diamond, isn't it? Yes, you remember it then, eh? I do. It was stolen over two years ago. A considerable loss to your company. Yes, the stone was never recovered. And you paid up and looked pleasant about it, eh? Well, we paid up. I'm afraid it's never been traced yet. You see, a stone like that can never be disposed of through the usual channels. No. Our own investigators believe Barker knows where it is. Very likely. Barker was released this morning. Oh, well, then I'm a bit late with my information. Yes, I'm afraid you are. Now come in. So you're still keeping the case warm? Well, we don't let things get cold here. We've already put one of our best men on the job, Inspector Marriott. Marriott? I've met Marriott. He had a man out of the prison to meet Barker this morning. Do you mean Barker was arrested? No, not yet. We haven't enough evidence. But if Barker knows where the Villiers diamond is, it's more than likely that he'll lead us to it. Bell's ringing. I can hear it. Do you think I'm deaf? Why on earth do people have to come here when I'm busy? What do you want ringing like that? Is this where Mr. Silas Wade hangs at? Well, what if it is? I want to see him, that's what. What about? I'll tell him that when I see him. Are you selling anything? Why, do you want to buy something? No, I don't. Now be off with you. Take your foot away. Go on, it was shut in. That's all right, Ma, that's all right. How dare you push your way in this house? You just tell the governor of Gent's call to see him, an old pal. You! You! Come and hold this man. I'll call the master. Mr. Wade! Mr. Wade, come quickly. Open the door. Please hurry. Look at her. Please hurry! Was a burglar or something. You! Throw him out at once! You hear what the lady Open says, Joe? Throw me out. Mr. Wade! You two. What's all this noise about? It's that man, sir. Hello, Governor. He's forced his way into the house, sir. That's all right, Ma. No offence. Go in. Nearly pushed me over, he did. Never knew of such a thing. Be quiet, Mrs. Benson. What? Go to your kitchen. Well? And you too. This is what I call real classy. That's what it is. What do you mean by pushing your way into my house like this? Because she wouldn't let me come in if I hadn't, that's why. Where did you come out? This morning. They knocked a bit off my time for being a good boy. And then you must have come straight here. That's right, Governor. Just like a perishing home in Pigeon. Well, why couldn't you get in touch with me some other way? Because this is all I got left in the world after I paid me fear. Fourpence. And I wouldn't have had that if the pubs had been open. Look here. You've got to get out of this place at once. Understand? Oh, let me go. You pay me what you owe me on the Villiers Sparkler and you won't see me for dust. 150 of the best. That's the figure, ain't it, Gav? You can have ten pounds. Ten pounds? That's all you can have for the present. When do I get the rest? When I've disposed of the diamond. Do you mean to say you ain't got rid of it yet? Oh, you know as well as I do what a risky business it is getting rid of a big stone. How do I know you ain't kidding me? You don't believe me, eh? Where are you going to? Cut the cabbage for dinner, like you told me to. You'll stay here till that man goes. Well, what about the cabbage? Never mind about the cabbage. You sit here and peel these potatoes. And you see this? Yes, it's a poker. If the master rings, take this and, and go and help him. Understand? Oi! Now do you believe me? Ain't she a beaut? Would you like to try to sell it? Who, me? Walk about with a thing like that in my pocket? 
<laughs> Not blooming likely. I thought as much. Do you mean to say you can't raise 150 quid for a bloke what's earned it? Fair and square. Yeah, why don't you get something that'll work? Give us a match. And you with a house like this, flowers on the table, silver box to keep your fags in, everything the art can desire. I've already told you I can't let you have that amount at once. All right, Governor. If it's your own way, I'll just stop here till I gets it. I like this place. Well, me if I don't. I tell you, you can't stay here. Why not? You just out of jail. The police are bound to be after you. They ain't got nothing on me now. I can take care of myself. Yes, you did that before and got two years for it. Well, that was a knock. Don't be a fool. Come on, get out of here. Keep your hair on, Governor. Keep your hair on. What's wrong with me going to the insurance company and telling them where the Villiers Parker is? You wouldn't dare. I got it, Gav. Listen. You're going to take pity on me and give me a fresh start in life, see? Kind of don't get that's what you're going to be. Taking in an old leg and giving him a soft job. You know what I'm going to be? Your butler. You where's Mrs. Benson? Yes, sir. Coming, sir. Well, what's he doing with that poker? It's for him, sir. She told me, sir. Well, don't be half-witted. Go back to the kitchen. Oh, um, uh, Mrs. Benson, uh, I've engaged Mr. Uh... Barker, sir. Henry Barker. Yes, as, uh, as butler. What? Butler, ma. Do you mean he's going to live here? Yes. He can use the small box room. How small is it? Big enough to hold you for a week. Then you can have mine. I'm giving in my notice. You'll do nothing of the sort. See? How about the togs, Governor? Must look the part. Togs? Yes, you know, monkey suit. I've always fancied myself in a dicky. Oh, yes, Mrs. Benson. Turn out that old evening suit of mine for Mr. Barker. Oh! Hmm, nice friend, a little soul. Her and me's going to eat it off proper. Here's a nice kettle of fish. He's gone and engaged that man as butler. Why, oh, where butlers are for? What are they for, Mrs. Benson? Butler, indeed. It's more like a burglar to me. I know. Perhaps the master's got him to take the place of those two maids who walked out of here last week. Put that poker down and don't talk nonsense. Did you ever know a butler who's any good in the house but to make more work? So that's what they're for, is it? It's all they're good for. I go to the trouble of engaging two good maids and what does he do? Goes and upset them the very first week and then engages a butler, if you please. Why do I stay on in this house? Can you tell me that? I'll buy it, Mrs. Benson. Why do you? Because I'm soft in the head as well as the heart. But I'll not say much more of it. No maids, no Mrs. Benson. That's my last word. Hello, Ma. Looks a bit of all right, don't it? Just shows you. All you need to be a toffee's posh dad, see? That's all right, Ma. I'll answer it. Watch this. Well? I ran for Mr. Wade. <coughs> What's funny? <laughs> what a clever you know. <laughs> Awful, the impudence of these here lower classes. Oh, a uh, telegram for you, Gab. Huh? Uh, sir. Where'd I put my glasses? Oh, that's all right. I'll read it for you. Johnny on the spot, that's me. You'll do nothing of the sort. What on earth does this mean? Is there anything wrong, sir? Miss Jones coming back. But I thought she had another six months to go. She had. Something's wrong. What are you waiting for? Coming back. Very inconvenient. It won't be inconvenient, sir. We've plenty of beds. And I shall be very pleased to see Miss Joan after a year in that dirty foreign country. She'll brighten up this place a bit. Eh? Hey. Oh, give it a real tug. Let him know we're here. Fix a chest back. I do not stick. Miss Joan. Hello, Mrs. Benson. I am pleased to see you. Yes, but will Uncle be pleased to see me? Oh, come on in. Did you have a good journey? As well as could be expected. 
There is Monsieur Venter. I will speak with you. Oh, Mrs. Benson, this is Mademoiselle Dulac. How do you do? Not down. Gracious. What's this? Butler, miss. Anything wrong? Oh, no. Isn't he sweet? Well, if it comes to that, miss, uh, you're not so bad yourself. <laughs> oh. oh, hello, Uncle. Hello. Pleased to see me. Uh, what's the meaning of this? Oh, you chucked out of college. Excuse me, miss. I will make the explanation. If Monsieur will permit. Certainly. Come in here. What's she been up to now, I wonder? A regular corker, that's what she is. A bit right off the top with all the sugar on. Here, take those things up to her room. Do I have to do all the work in this house? You take them up, Joe. Well, I'm for a cooler. Where's the local, Ma? Ask Joe. And don't call me Ma. I was going to the Golden Goose. I'll tell him you're coming. Where's the governor keep his overcoat? Oh. Like this, Uncle, you I will permit me to make the explanation. Yes. Two weeks ago, Mademoiselle here go on holiday with the other young lady. Yes. And when she returned to the college, we find letters she had written to one young man and letters one young man had written to her. Those letters are my property. Voila. Monsieur can read how this young man makes a proposition of marriage to run away. But I don't see why the college authorities couldn't have dealt with this matter. It's a serious thing to expel a young girl like this. That's what I said. No, no, no. The college will not have the responsibility. And Monsieur Vett, more important still, you have paid no fees for two terms. Uncle, that isn't true, is it? Joan, will you leave me to discuss this matter alone? I'll talk to you later. All right, Uncle. Have it your own way. Hey, Aunt, you want 15. 13, can't you count? 13, what's it? Do you know him, Joe? Know him? I'll say I do. Fair card, he is, no mistake. Same again, please. Yes, sir. Joe, Mr. Wilson here is down for a bit of fishing. Perhaps you can put him right. Oh, why, if it's fishing you want, sir, I'll show where you can pull him out of your bare hand. Thank you very much. Another time. Joe, that chap's no fool at darts. Where'd he come from? He shoved his way into our house this morning. Had Mrs. Benson hollering for help. Go on. Aye, true as I'm standing here. And before we knew where we was, he was all dressed up in one of our governor's vile shirts. How oh, a new butler he is. Double four you want. Here it comes. Got it, too. Easy. That's another pint up your shirt, mate. Win again, sir? All scheme. <laughs> well, Jim, you'll cock a lot of air goes it. Same again? Yeah. That's right, pay up and look pleasant. You throw a very good dart. I was born with a dart in each hand. It ain't natural. What ain't? Being born with a dart in each hand. Well, that comes from my father smashing a dart board over my mother's head. Cool. It's the first time I've ever heard the likes of that. <laughs> Harry, the room's ready now for Jennifer's side of the state. Are you staying, sir? Oh, thank you very much. I'm sorry to give you all this trouble. Oh, it's no trouble in the usual way, sir. But just at present, we're short-handed. We can't get a girl for love nor money. Neither can I. You don't deserve one, Joe. Well, Tom, I was back at the beaches. Right, one more. Good night, sir. Good night, Joe. Good night. Bright lad here. Ah, he should liven up the beaches a bit. He's done that already. Oh, it'll liven things up. Why, well, is your governor a quiet sort of chap? Why, he's quiet enough. But you never know what he's going to do next. Uh -huh. Kind of queer, like. Hmm. Well, good night, Harry. Good night, Joe. Good night, sir. Good night. Did you have to come back? Didn't have to, but did. Friendly like, that's me. <laughs> Dear. That's right, Ma. Six pints of it. Disgusting. Oh, no, it ain't, Ma. Makes the place more homely-like. Yeah, take this coffee to the drawing room. Well, more work. And don't breathe on it. I've never heard such conduct in my life. Never. Writing to young men like this. Only one young man, Uncle. Besides, why shouldn't I? I'm not a child. I'm 19. And who is he? Some unscrupulous adventurer after your money, I suppose. 
He doesn't know I've got any money. Disgraceful behavior. I never believed it of a niece of mine. Picking up a strange young man. But Alan isn't like that, Uncle. Oh, it's Alan, is it? Has he got any money of his own? What's he do? He's an author. <laughs> an author. Well, he made nearly a hundred pounds last year, just writing short stories. If he can do that now, just think what he'll make writing books. And how do you think he's going to keep you on that? Oh, you've got ten thousand pounds of my money. Ten thousand quid, truth. How long have you been standing there? Who oh, uh, just brought the coffee, Gad, sir. Well, now you've brought it, you can go. Uncle, how is my money invested? That's no concern of yours. And it's in my charge until you're 21. Or until I marry. But only if you marry with my consent. If I allowed you to run off with the first young man you meet, I, I should be failing in a sacred duty. All right, then. Meet Alan and judge for yourself. Meet him where? Ask him down here. He's back in London. Certainly not. Preposterous idea. Ridiculous. But why? Because I say so. I'm sure if you saw him, you'd love him. He's young and Irish. That's enough. I don't want to hear any more. I think it's very unfair of you. You've just disgraced the family name by getting yourself expelled from one of the finest finishing schools on the continent for behavior which... Oh, rot. Joe, you forget yourself. And I don't feel I did anything wrong. You wouldn't give me a chance to explain. Just let it in for me. By the way, why didn't you pay my college fees? Joan, you will leave such matters as the payment of school fees to me. Very well, then. Perhaps my private affairs you'll leave to me. Now, look here, Barker. I won't have this sort of thing. If you're going to stay here, you'll remember your place. Go on, go. Pipe down. Oh, Lummy, if you ain't the artfulest old cove I've ever come across. What precisely do you mean? Ten thousand quid, that's what I mean. And there was you as bold as brass telling me you hadn't got the dough, me to pay what you owe. And you sitting pretty on ten thousand of the best. It's not my money. I know, I heard. Your sacred duty to guard it, careful. Disgracing the family name. Oh, love it, Huck. You can't half spill it. It brought the tears to me, people, as you did. <laughs> Disgracing the family name. Now, look here, Barker. Let's understand Stow each other. it. Hand over my hundred and fifty. And if you do it prompt, I'll only charge you one hundred interest. And chuck in another hundred, and I won't tell the girl what an awful old codger her uncle is. That makes 350 altogether. Yes, and now you listen to me for a change. That 10,000's gone. And if you're going to stay here, you've got to help me get it back. Oh, who says so? I say so. Up till now, you've done all the talking. This is where I start. Yes, you think you've got me right over the billiards down. But what about the Ridgeway affair? And the Bellamy case? And two or three others I could mention. Well, what about them? The Ridgeway affair and the Bellamy case are sufficient to send you back for 10 years to the place you've just come from. What about yourself? Either you do as I say, or I notify the police tomorrow. Which is it to be? All right. Let's hear your scheme. Now listen carefully. Although the girl's money's gone, I've still got some precious stones, fully insured. This is the idea. Well, I never knew there were so many funny things in the agony column before. So <laughs> many tragedies. Have you written to all these? All four that are marked. Seriously mean to invite these people here? Well, that is the intention. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've ever heard of. But surely, girl, there's nothing strange in wishing to bring a little light into the dark lives of these poor people. But why invite them here for a week? Well, to give them sympathy and companionship. Just think of it. Elderly spinster penniless, ex-captain out of work, young widow left destitute. Yes, and this poor young man, only 23. Starving, probably without a friend in the world. What age did it say? Twenty-three. So tell Joe to post these at once. I'll post them myself. What will Mrs. Benson say? Mrs. Benson will just do as she's told.
Take your feet off my table. The master must have been clean out of his mind having a man like you here. Oh, and now inviting all these strangers. Perhaps burglars, maybe murderers. That's right. Cracked idea, I call it. Well, would you believe it? Here's a kind-hearted old gent doing a good turn to some people what's down on their luck. A real bit of Christian charity, and here's you saying he's off his rocker. I'm surprised at you two. Christian charity, indeed. We shall all be murdered in our beds. That'll be the end of us. Far more likely to kiss you goodnight and tuck you up out of gratitude. I'd like to see anybody tuck me up. No good's going to come of this, mark my words. Here's another fine tale for the golden goose. Would be if anybody did tuck her up. We shall never be ready in time. No, <laughs> my Mrs. Benson, stick it. Last laugh. It's lovely having you back again, Miss Joan. The place is dead when you're not here. That's sweet of you to say that. I don't know what I should have done without you with all these people coming. I could never have got this mattress up those stairs without your help. Why isn't Parker helping you? They're good for nothing. Sitting in the kitchen with his feet on the table, smoking one of the master's cigars as usual. Where on earth did Uncle pick him up? I can't understand how he can tolerate such a man in his house. I don't know, dear, but you can depend on it he's up to no good. Ever since he came here, the master's been behaving peculiar-like. Really? I suppose I didn't ought to say it, miss. But in my opinion, there's something funny about all this. In what way? Well, your uncle turning all charitable like this all of a sudden. And what I want to know is, what's Barker got to do with it? Oh, goodness knows. Oh, well, come on, let's hurry, or Joe will be here with those people before we're ready. A quick in, Harry, please. Yes, Joe. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Any news from the house, Joe? No. Except that the old man's still queer-like. Mrs. Benson says it's a touch of the moon. Yes, the moon does affect some people. Is he ill? No. No, just gone all charitable-like. Wants to be friends with folks. What's this party we write to you lot about? Is it because the young lady's home? I don't know. Except that Mrs. Benson says he's invited a lot of people down from London. Picked him out of a paper with a pin. You must watch yourself. You'll have to sleep with one eye open. Oh, it don't make no difference to me, sir. I don't sleep at the house. <laughs> I sleep with my mother. What does the new butler think about all these visitors? Oh, he's all on the old man's side, he is. The old man can't do no wrong. Good evening, sir. Ah, good evening. Half a bit of, please. Yes, sir. Can you tell me how to get to a house called The Beaches? Why, yes, sir. That's Mr. Wade's home. Joe here works there. Oh, then perhaps you'd be kind enough to direct me. Are you one of the party that's expected here? What party? No offense, sir, but I'm going to the station to meet some folks for The Beaches. Then you must be the man that was sent to meet me. My name's Dawson. Captain Dawson. That was one of the names on my list, sir. I came on an earlier train and walked from the station. Well, you make yourself comfortable here, sir, and I'll pick you up on my way back. No, thanks. I think I'll walk. Do me good to stretch my legs. Is it far from here? Well, sir, if you go the nearest way, you'll find it a bit longer than t'other. I'm going near there myself. I'd be glad to show you the way. Oh, that's very kind of you. Not at all. It's a pleasure. Will you be back to supper, sir? Yes, about eight. Right. You can leave your bag, sir. I'll take that. Oh, no, thanks. I think I'll look after it myself. Good night, sir. Do come in. Uh, Mrs. Forbes? Yes. Oh, so pleased to make your acquaintance. Uh, Miss Wary? Yes. How do you do? Um, this must be Mr. Pickett. Yes, that's right. Good. So glad you were able to come. Thank you. Do please make yourselves all comfortable. <laughs> Bring in the luggage, Parker. <coughs> well, I hope your journey down wasn't too uncomfortable. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> yes, the local train service isn't very fast, but it does get one there in the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's uh, <laughs> Oh, um, uh, this is my niece, Miss Raynor. Uh, Miss Waring. How do you do? So pleased to meet you. So very pleased. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Forbes. How do you do? How do you do? And uh, Mr. Pickett. How do you do, Mr. Pickett? And how do you do? Uh, there is also Captain Dawson, who arrived before you. Uh, he's upstairs in his room. Let me say how much I hope you'll all enjoy your stay here. Very kind of you, I'm sure. Oh, not at all, Miss Waring. Please regard the house as yours. Liberty Hall is there. I think that's sweet of you, Mr. Wade. Thank you, Mrs. Forbes. Uh, but after all, is it not our duty to help each other in uh, hours of need? 
That's what I always say. How true, how very true. <laughs> and now I expect you'd all like to see your rooms. Uh, Mrs. Benson, my housekeeper, will show the ladies to theirs, and Barker will look after Mr. Pickett. <laughs> Follow me. You really are a dear. You're very kind. Oh, I can be kinder than that. Uh, the gong will be sounded for dinner. Now, what in heaven's name is all this about? I'll explain later when I get a chance. And, and you haven't kissed me yet. Oh, I knew there was something I'd forgotten. <laughs> And listen, for the time being, remember, you're an unemployed clerk. What? Uh, that's your room, Mr. Pickett. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Miss Rayner. Uh, How do you do? I'm very well, thank you. Hello. Hello. How do you do? Very well, thank you. Splendid. Mm. You staying here, too? Oh, yes, I live here. Oh, better still. Mm. Nice house, don't you think? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. You did stay in here, Miss Rayner. Uh, oh, yes, that's right, Mr. Pickett. Yes. <laughs> I wonder if you could tell me where the bathroom is. I think it's the second on the right. Oh, thank you so much. Excuse me, could you tell me where the bathroom is? I think it's the second on the right. Thank you very much. Delighted. Could you tell me where the bathroom is? Yes, sir. Down there, sir. Third on the right, sir. <laughs> Anything funny, sir? I hope not. You ask me, it's a waste of time serving up a good dinner to that bunch. Oh, but think of the joy we're bringing into their darkened lives. Think of my find at the Golden Goose. Muck. Here, Mrs. Benson, your fire's going out. You want me to get some more coal? Yes, Joe, you might as well fill it up. All right. No wonder people get bad stomachs drinking stuff like this. Well, that isn't going to hurt them after you've done with it. Thanks. Queer place, but it's rather attractive. Hmm. Yes. Lovely. Beautiful. Oh, this is our hostess, Miss Rayner. Good evening. And you are Captain Dawson. I hope you'll enjoy our stay here. I don't think there'll be any doubt about that. Some more of the house party? Yes. Uh, this is Captain Dawson, fellow guest. Mrs. Ford. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Miss Waring. How do you do? Do have a cocktail, everybody. Thank you. It's a long time since I had a cocktail. Uh, do you think I ought to? Blimey, well, these won't hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. So much kindness and so much beauty. Letter. Ladies, my heart is at your feet. What's the good of it there? Oh, lovely. I don't know when I've tasted anything more delicious. Parker, why all that noise? Dinner's ready, sir, that's why. All nice and hot. <laughs> Allow me, Mrs. Forbes. Oh, what a, what a charming dress you're wearing. Yes, I always think that crimson do start people so well. Allow me, madam. <laughs> I'm not married, you know. Incredible. <laughs> Hello, darling. How oh, big you are. I thought you were never going to go to that dining room. Well, I couldn't be rude to my uncle's guest. And dinner was a torture now, wasn't it? No, Mrs. Benson's the best cook in England. <laughs> I'm not referring to the cooking or the food, and I'll admit that she is perhaps the best cook outside of Ireland. But to have to sit for two whole hours answering your uncle's questions about unemployed clerks, when all the time I wanted to be alone with you, well, well, it fair drove me daft. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what happened at college? Well, they found one of your letters, mm -hmm. accused me of trying to elope, and packed me off home without giving me any opportunity to explain. Did you mind? Oh. Well, did you? <laughs> no, of course not. I just jumped at the chance of being in the same country as yourself. Oh, Joan, you're wonderful. Do you know what? What? I'm beginning to think you're a bit in love with me. Uh -huh. well, what did your uncle say? Oh, he was furious at first. 
preached a lot and refused to have your name mentioned. Oh, he did, did he? Well, we'll soon see about that. And what's all this blither about me being an unemployed clerk? Well, because Uncle had an insane idea about entertaining some down nods from the Agony Club. Well, you might have chosen a better name than Mr. Pickett. And I thought that if Uncle could only see for himself how wonderful you are, everything would be all right and Mr. Alan O'Connell would change places with Mr. Pickett. Then I'll tackle your uncle first thing in the morning. I don't see why he should object to our getting married. But he wouldn't consent for at least another two years. Then we'll plan a real elopement this time. All right, Mr. Pickett. Come on. Oh, not yet. Darling, we must. They'd be suspicious. Oh, very well, then very well. Thank you, Captain Dawson. Very nice indeed. Very nice, Captain Dawson. Thanks. You played beautifully. Oh, bother, I've broken my bracelet. Yeah, dear, allow me. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> They're not real, of course. Mm, these stones would be very valuable if they were real. Are you interested in jewels, Mr. Wade? The precious stones are my great hobby. A collector? Oh, well, of course, one has to be very rich to be a collector of such things, but in my small way, yes, I do a little. Darwin? Yes, just a few. How wonderful. It must be thrilling to possess real stones. Oh, well, if any of you are really interested, I should enjoy showing you my little collection. I keep them in the study. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, uh, this way. Do we have to see these crown jewels? Well, I think it will please Uncle. Oh, blazes. All right, then. Mm. What a wonderful hiding place. Yes, isn't it? One can't be too careful, you know. Beautiful. They must be worth a fortune. Oh, you mustn't run away with the idea that I'm a millionaire, you know. It's a nice little collection, yes. But on the other hand, the market in various stones fluctuates a good deal. And there's no harm in making one's hobby pay. <laughs> a very interesting sideline, Mr. Wade. Oh, yes. And at times quite a profitable one. But, Uncle, do you make a lot of money by collecting stones like those? Oh, well, of course, one, uh, one has to wait for the market sometimes. But there's always the comforting thought that the intrinsic value remains, and that one's money is well invested. May I hold one? Oh, please do. Ah, I see you've chosen a sofa. My favorite stone. I prefer rubies. So voluptuous. <laughs> the ruby is really a variety of the sapphire. Is that so? Oh, yes, though Miss Waring is right in one respect. The best rubies are more valuable than diamonds of the same size and quality. You're quite a connoisseur, Mr. Wade. Oh, well, hardly a connoisseur. Better say an enthusiastic amateur. Aren't you interested in diamonds, Mr. Pickett? Well, I don't know very much about them, but I rather like them in brooches and, and, and rings. Yes, they really are beautiful. Make me most envious. Thank you. I wish I could afford your hobby, Mr. Wade. I should be afraid to have such a lot of valuable stones from the house. I really should. Oh, well, nobody's tried to steal them yet. What happens if a large stone is stolen? Well, I really don't know. Don't they uh, cut them up if they want to dispose of them? Oh, yes, I believe they do. In detective stories. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me anymore tonight, Mrs. Benson? No, that's all right, Joe. I can manage now. Right. Good night. Good night, Joe. Hello, Maul. Are you working? Mm. If he wants me to stay here, you'll have to get more help. Real help. Get to bed, then. You've a lot of time to make up for beauty sleep. <coughs> Lord never says that bell again. All this work will be the death of me. What's the matter? Oh, charming of you to say so. Oh, Barker, my guests are retiring now. <laughs> See that they get all they require before they go to bed. <coughs> all right, Gub, sir. What about Toddy in your room, miss? No, thank you. Haven't we met somewhere before? Want the Carlo can, Dodo Carls? Take your choice. What about the Cat's Whiskers Club? Somewhere in Soho. Oh, I so you used to go there. I did. <laughs> and what's more, I was there the night it was raided. Oh, good night, sir. Really? Good night, Mr. Pickett. Sleep well. So was I. Good night, my dear. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Mrs. Fawkes. Good night. And pleasant dreams, mine. How could they be otherwise? Good night, Mr. Wade. If the rest of the week is as good as tonight, I'm sure I'll enjoy every minute of it. We must try and make it so. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Barker.
May pleasant dreams attend the sleep of beauty. <laughs> you do say the most intriguing things. <laughs> <laughs> I shall look forward to seeing you in the morning. Thank you, Captain Dawson. Oily devil. A bit too well dressed for my liking. Mm -hmm. Jealous. Of course I'm jealous. No jealousy, no love. <laughs> Make me talk. I'll show you. young woman. This hand-to-mouth kissing business must stop. Oh, Alan, don't be absurd. Well, who does he think he is anyway? And if he's dull enough, where does he get all those clothes from? Oh, he's the captain. Hmm. Papa Saab, I suppose. One of the white man sort. Always dresses for dinner, eh? Well, anyway, if it comes to that, you don't look much like an unemployed clerk yourself. <laughs> well, I don't want to be outdone by a guy like him. Oh, Alan, be nice. Well, who do we fix it on? The Irishman. How do we do it? Listen, if this starts to disappear, there's got to be an accomplice, somebody from outside. Who's he going to bring? Oh, nobody, your fool. Oh, it's getting clearer every minute. You're the accomplice, understand? Me? Yes, you'll be waiting outside on the terrace. Now, when the lights come up in this room, you shout for help and make all the noise you can. Why? Well, because you're supposed to be struggling with the accomplice who's trying to get away. In the meantime, I hold the Irishman in here, which establishes that we've caught him and his accomplice red-handed. Oh, I'm just beginning to get you. Now, when all the others come rushing in, you stagger back from the windows and say that the accomplice knocked you down and got away. Well, you don't sound so easy, Governor. Oh, listen, knock yourself about a bit and come in all beaten up. Eh? You know, steal your clothes, make your nose bleed, and, well, in general, make yourself look like someone who's had a desperate struggle. But don't knock yourself unconscious. Good night, Parker. Good night, Gab. Sir. But what does money matter at all, dear? I wouldn't want to be wasting the time eating when I could be spending it looking after you. I feel the same, darling. But, hmm? but I don't think I could go without my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> then I get up and cook it for you myself. I'm going to tell your uncle who I am in the morning. If he doesn't like it, well, he can do the other thing. But suppose he insisted on your leaving. I mean, we'd lose the rest of the week together. Well, then I'm going to take you with me. And the devil help anyone who tries to stop me. Lights out, Alan. Hmm? We'd better go in. Oh. oh, what a shame. Come on. All right, then, anything you say. the charming Mrs. Forbes. Who would have believed it? So it's you. Well, who were you expecting? You're after the stuff too. What do you think? 50-50, that's what I think. For what? For not screaming the place down. <laughs> Never heard me scream, have you? Can't say I have. Shall I show you? All right. 50-50. Now you watch the door.
Can I do anything for you, Miss Wary? How oh, you frightened me. My digestive tablets. I left them here. I, I, I suffered terribly from my digestion. I couldn't sleep. I hope you'll be able to sleep now, Miss Wary. Thank you. Good night. Uh, good night, Mr. Wayne. You must get out of here. No, no, Ted. You go to the door again and keep watch. Go down to the study and pull the picture from over the safe. The safe's not locked. Then open the study windows and wait outside on the terrace. Right, Kev. I'll go and fetch the boy. Did you find them? Yes. Good. Now we can go. Just a moment. Quick, wake up! What's the matter? There's somebody moving about downstairs. Oh, well, let him. I'm upstairs. Shh. It may be burglars. Burglars? Yes, do come. Look, my safe. The stone's gone. They've been stolen. Edna, Edna, help, help. There he is. Sparker. Get him. No, you don't. Try to get away. Hey, what do you mean? Hold him, Barker. Don't let him go. That's all I give him. I got it. Take your hands off me, you crazy. <coughs> Fancy yourself, eh? Diamonds, my stones, they've been stolen. Good Burglars. Oh! oh. <coughs> Captain Dawson, they're in there fighting now. <coughs> That's him. Hold on to him, Barker. <coughs> Good gracious, what's the matter? Hey, have you and your butler gone mad? Alan, what's happened? Well, that's what I'd like to know. He's a thief. I caught him red-handed at my safe. Look, it's been robbed. Oh, how dreadful. This is what comes of trying to do good to people. Uncle, you can't mean this. Be quiet. I tell you, he's a scoundrel and a thief. Where are my down? I don't know what you're talking about. The other man, what was with him, has got him. An accomplice? Yes, he got away with the stuff. I chased him, but he escaped. 
You liar! Why are you walked into the garden and attacked me for no reason at all? You now, please. Mr. Pickett, take it easy, please. Take it easy. Take it easy, my hat. Why, the whole thing is crazy. You, you don't believe it, do you? Why? So you're in this too, are you? No, I... That's why you got me down here, so you and your uncle could plant this on me. Alan, I know nothing about it. You must believe me. I don't believe you. It's as plain as Barker's ugly face. Just a dirty trick between the three of you. What it's all about, I don't know. But it's not true, Alan. You're being beastly and unfair. What's this? What's between you two? Uh, he, he isn't Mr. Pickett. No? And who is he? He's Alan O'Connell. O'Connell? The man who got you expelled? Mm -hmm. How did he get here? tore up your letter to the unemployed clerk, whose name you marked in the agony column, and wrote to Alan is dead. Blimey. Is your real name Alan O'Connell? Yes, it is. You see, he's a brazen adventurer as well as a thief. Hey, you're making a very grave accusation, Mr. Wayne. There must be some mistake. There's nothing of the sort. The man you let into my house is a thief. But I tell you, he I... robbed me of my diamonds and his accomplice got away with them. Parker, call the police. Police? Me? What for? Call the police. Just a moment. What are you doing there? You see, your diamonds are quite safe, Mr. Wade. Uh, yes, but are they all there? No. I mean, yes. Where's the big one? If you mean the Villiers diamond, here it is. Sleuth! What does this mean? Mr. Wade, I'm Inspector Marriott of Scotland Yard. Oh, blow me a cough. Oh, oh, I think I'm going to faint. All right, all right. He's trying to get away, sir. All right, hold him. Let go, you pub crawler. Mr. Wade, I'm afraid I must ask your guests to go to their rooms. Why, certainly. Would you please? I'll explain later, Mr. O'Connell. Just a moment, Mr. Wade. I shan't want you, Mrs. Forbes. Why is it so hard, Mr. Dawson? I'm giving you a chance, and I hope you'll take it. Thanks, I will. Good night, Inspector Marriott. Good night. Well, now, Inspector, perhaps you wouldn't mind telling me what all this is about and how you got here. Not at all. We've had one or two of these agony column advertisers under suspicion for some time. Your letters were intercepted. I took the real Captain Dawson's place. That's all. Well, is that so? I'm afraid I shall have to ask you to accompany me to the police station. Me? But this is monstrous. There are one or two questions I want to ask you regarding the Villiers diamond, which was stolen nearly two years ago. But I know nothing about that. Stow it, Governor. You've been copped with the goods on you. All right, take him along. What, well, like this? Take him up and let him get his things. You too, Mr. Wade. This is what comes of keeping bed company. <laughs>